to every other community. Like, there's so many unique people in it, and everyone's good at different things, but they all share one thing, which is cubing. There's people that have struggles in their life, but the cubing is the thing that makes them happy, and that's their thing. When cubes like started, everyone got into it, and there's some people that just work really hard on this, and that's their passion, and that's what just is so amazing about the community. You don't have to necessarily talk a lot, just like being with other people and sharing sharing tricks and things like that, it's still something anybody can do because the cube doesn't necessarily need any language. If you if you can do solves, if you, if you can point out certain things, then you can still be a part of it. It's just fun, just uh, meet friends and meet cubing friends and just all together. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, cubing has uh, made uh, made my life so much better. Like I met, I've met so much, so many good people throughout uh, my cubing career. So yeah, I think cubing is like my family. Cubing has pretty much transformed my life. I I had hobbies before, but ever since I was 11 years old, it's been pretty much all that I do. And I've just made so many great friends and gotten so many opportunities to travel for it. So it's a, like art, science. It's a way of means of travel for me. And uh, for me, it's a way to experiment and self-assess myself. Just everyone fits in. It doesn't matter like who you are. You could be the best in the world, or you could just be averaging a minute. They accept you, and you share some great memories together. There's literally no pressure. This is just your average ordinary local comp. This is like Michigan Cubing Club Delta 2019. There's no pressure. No one good is here. You know, I can just do whatever I want. You know, like, who cares if I DNF? It's like, not gonna happen. Stanley Chapel, I currently hold four world records, the singles that averages for 4x4 blind and 5x5 blind. Going into four blind finals, I was very nervous because it was my first major championship final where I was actually very relevant. So I tried to just delete any idea that this was a world championship from my mind, and I just tried to treat it like a local competition. At the same time, however, I tried to just be cautious. So I ended up safetying my first solve, and I ended up like taking my memo a bit too fast for that because I ended up with a 25 second pause. Um, but the time still would have won by about 25 seconds, so I was much safer than I expected, but that's only due to the unfortunate DNFs from Kaiju and Graham. And then on second solve, after securing a success, I decided to just try a solve going all out, and I ended up getting a 108 world record single on it, which I'm very happy with. And with two successes under my belt and being like 99% sure that I was world champion, I decided to just lightly safety my last solve to get world record mean, since I've never had an official four blind mean, and you know, why not do it at Worlds? I ended up getting a 120, which resulted in a 121 world record mean. That's a double world record in four blind finals. In five blind finals, however, I was much less nervous because I had already gone through four blind, so I kind of knew what I was going into. So I decided to go all out, which almost proved to be completely disastrous because I DNF'd my first two solves. I decided to memo just a tiny bit slower than my top speed, but execute slowly by just purposefully limiting my turning, turning speed by like turning blocky on purpose. What that did was it eliminated base virtually any chance that I could make an execution mistake because I wasn't allowing fluidity into my execution. It allowed me to retain uh, my usual home uh, memo flow that I have through my mind because I was memoing so close to my regular speed and that ended up getting me a 238 world record single, which I'm also very happy with.
but at that point, at that point, you were already starting to feel symptoms. Yeah, right. So before Worlds, uh, I was starting to feel symptoms where my fingers would swell after I used uh, strong magnets and cubes. Uh, so right before Worlds, I noticed that it was really bad. Like my fingers could not, they couldn't uh, uh, bend straight. So uh, I wasn't totally healthy for Nationals and Worlds, but I dealt with it. Uh, but then after that, um, it didn't, my condition didn't improve. So uh, my doctors diagnosed me with uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So now I'm medicated and I'm improving, but I'll still always have um, finger or joint inflammation whenever I keep too much. So I took one, like one and a half years off competing. I tried to stay active in the community as much as possible, which is hard if you can't cube, right? Even, even as accepting as the community is, like if you can't cube, it's, it just doesn't work. So I tried to pick up other hobbies, you know, like following sports pretty avidly and, you know, talking with friends from school, but I just tried to keep posting videos somewhat regularly, just keep myself integrated a little bit. Luckily, my fingers have gotten to a point where I can speak cube again, so it definitely was uh, pretty depressing, but I'm back now, so just hoping for the best from here on out. So, yeah. People take cubing for granted, like you're not always going to be able to uh, solve quickly, which isn't the most important part of cubing, but definitely is useful when uh, meeting new people, uh, going to competitions. So I think I value most the uh, social interactions in cubing, uh, the relationships you can form, also the competitive nature of it. Uh, there's really no other activity like it. So. I deeply, deeply value cubing and my experience with arthritis has really, uh, really accentuated that. Cubing's got me through a couple of hard things, like family-wise and other stuff. And like just being able to solve a Rubik's Cube, and let's say you're going to the doctor, you need to buy some time, a Rubik's Cube will, yeah, it's just a lot easier and it's fun and it's just, yeah. I didn't really have many friends when I was home, like I had school friends when I was in school but when I went home I never really went out to play or anything so when I started cubing I finally got like some friends that I felt comfortable around and uh, I think that just made me stick with cubing for as long as I could because it gave me the best friends I had in my entire life. You think cubing is fun? Yeah, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes it's not fun, you know, especially when I showed officially. A few days ago, I went to a Sydney warm-up competition, and it was really, really good at the, big, at the very beginning. They're like a 7.6 average, yeah. which isn't really good for me, but it's okay, whatever. And the semi-finals go 7.24, and I placed seventh, and I even beat Patrick Pons and some really fast dude like Philip Vaya. So I was like, okay, I, I made it, like no point in you know getting nervous and stuff. It's gonna be fun, you know, I just, just need to solve in finals, whatever. It's, it's either I'll get a seven average or six average, whatever. And I got a 9.65 average. It never happened to me before, like, I was paralyzed. I, I even can't describe it, it was such a weird feeling. At Worlds 2017, Felix made a joke saying I would be the one-handed world champion. Uh, obviously, I didn't take it seriously at first, especially since I wasn't practicing too much at the time, and that year I didn't even make finals. But thinking back about it, I thought it sounded really cool, so I decided it would be my goal for the next few years. After failing to become the European champion, which was my initial goal, I still had Worlds 2019 in prospect, and it came a lot sooner than, than I thought, and I, I definitely wasn't good enough to meet people like Patrick and Max, but my goal was still to make the podium, and uh, after failing the first round, I kind of lost hope, but uh, surprisingly I managed to step back, and in the end I made finals and I also got the podium, which is a dream that was achieved for me. So the world record was 37. Oh no! Oh. Oh. 
No. Everyone's cheering and they just can't yeah. stop. That could have been my world record, but yeah. it was just a continental record. And oh, that no. could have been my first world record, so it was my chance to be together with my brother, the first Peruvian to get a world record, because he got also a world record in that comp, oh. and I was like, okay, I, I, I can get it too. I was pretty sure I was going to get it, and with that lockup I was like, oh man. And it could have also been world record average, because after that 38, I got a 40, and the world record average was 42. But anyway, I was really pissed off, so I was like, no, I don't want to get world record in this way. And I was just <laughs> doing like really pissed off. <laughs> chose not to get the world record. Because I was really able to do it easily, yeah. but I was like, this is not a moment, I'm not like good with myself, so no. But before the salt, I felt like my hands started shaking, and it's, they usually don't, they usually don't. It's like, I, I rather like mess up myself. It's not my hands, but at this time it, it, it won't hands. And I was afraid that the scrambles would be bad, but it, they were awesome. They, they were insane, and I'm, I'm called neutral, so like I saw stuff immediately. It's usually when I'm nervous, I don't see anything, or I see it in a really long time. But I saw stuff immediately, like after a few seconds. So like, yeah, it's gonna be fine, I'm just gonna slow time. Like, what can happen? And I did that, and I felt like, okay, I'm doing quite well. And it's like 10 seconds slow. Like, my perception was really bad. Yeah, and I couldn't turn. I, I tried to calm down, to turn, to just, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Really, really tough. But it's good because from that, I can learn from the mistake. No, it's been a long time since I don't get a bad lock up like that. I don't lock up yeah. that much. Do you want to see this horse to get me nervous? Of course. <laughs> it's going to be a soft 32. Oh. It could have been better, not good. After I finished my solves that day, I was really sad, so I was like, I'm just gonna walk outside, you know, just chill a bit. I was really depressed, really, too. yeah, that was a really bad feeling. And after I woke up the next day, I was like, to be honest, it's just an experience, and you know, like, I just need to learn something from it. And like, next day I started cubing, and I was like, I'm, I'm really bad, like, my, my time is going good. But next day, I was really good, I started winning with Timon, even, even right now. Yeah, I beat Timon, like, quite often right now, and I'm getting sixes all the time, so I feel good. So, no point in worrying anymore, it's not fun. <laughs> so Timon, how much do you cube in a day? Like, as much as I'm awake, minus eating. <laughs> If I look at you, are you going to get nervous? Nervous? Right now? Yeah. Of course not. No? You want to try? Yeah. Really good yeah. song. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Juan Pablo. Oh, yeah. Juan Pablo's got it. Yep. With his best solve, he gets a 33-81 average, which is first place here at the World Championship. Back-to-back -back wins, two-time World Champion in Mega Mix. Yeah, he's won it. 2.40 average for Timon. So Timon Kolosinski is going to be taking the prize Sorry, what? Excuse me, what? Our third seed is the current European record holder for 3 by 3 average and is ranked third in the world. Please welcome Germany's Philip Fire.
Phillips with a 9.63. going to decide if Max Park is the world champion or if Philip Fire gets the upset and is the 2019 world champion. Philip is watching and he can barely watch. His nerves must be trembling. Yeah, like I said, this would mean so, so much for Philip. U.S. Nationals 2016, uh, and we've seen each other every summer since then. Wow. You went to visit him? I did, yeah. Um, I studied abroad in his city. Wow. And I, we went to a rap battle together. Yeah, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. He almost made the second round, <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> True story. <laughs> 